Raw Renora Zoro debuted on OPTC Global on the 24th of May 2017. This finalized the rest of the Straw Hat crew as they reunited at Saba Odi Archipelago after the time skip. This batch introduced some powerful additions to the Straw Hat roster, including Tony Tony Chopper, Monster Point, Straw Hat Pirates Born Again, Brooke, Straw Hat Pirates Born Again, Nico Robin, Straw Hat Pirates Born Again, as well as Usopp, Straw Hat Pirates Born Again. The Sugo Fest exclusive character of the batch was the final new Straw Hat character to arrive, introducing a powerful new way to play the slasher class in the game, boasting an incredible special ability that would provide a large attack boost to the slasher class, whilst also destroying lower health mobs with mass AoE damage. Introducing Roronora Zoro. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. So thank you very much for checking out another episode of the Legends of OPTC and today we're taking on my man V1 Zoro. Now of course I've already talked about this in the Time Skip Luffy video but there was actually something in particular about this batch that was very interesting. On Global they actually debuted Zoro's Sugarfest batch with the man Monkey D. Luffy and then originally the batch with Monkey D. Luffy debuted with Zoro. So a bit of a switcheroo this time around so let's talk about the batch first and then we'll talk about the Sugarfest exclusive being Zoro. First thing is the brand new Chopper character. Chopper is a strength fighter powerhouse character with a captain ability boosting powerhouse by 2.75 reducing the crew's recovery to zero. Very reminiscent of V1 Legend Luchi that came out so it's crazy that you have a rare recruit now that has like a very similar captain ability to what Legend Luchi had right and Legend Luchi's episode I mean it was quite a quite quite a long way away now but still it's crazy to think about and then we have the special ability of Chopper on an 18 turn cooldown which is ridiculous ridiculously high, reducing Rainbow Shield and Blue Shield by three turns and dealing a bit of damage to all enemies. So this is awesome because this is like where we're starting to get into more utility specials now. So three turns of Blue and Rainbow Shield removal is always going to be super useful to have, but just unfortunate that his cooldown was so ridiculously high, even at max special level. The next rare recruit on this list is Brook and probably is the most desirable of this entire batch. Brook being an int slash a free spirit with a captain ability of boosting your chain multiplier growth rate by two 2.5 times and also giving you a resilience effect if you're above 50% health but you know the captain ability no one was using Brook for his captain ability the special ability though on a 10 turn cooldown would delay all enemies for one turn and boosting the attack of slasher and free spirit characters by 1.75 times for one turn so the fact that you had a rare recruit now that would give not only a delay but also an attack boost to two separate classes was so so valuable and this is what a lot of time skip luffy fans like myself at the time were looking forward to having a character that on a, on a relatively low cooldown that could provide a pretty decent attack boost to our teams but also works well with Zoro because he also is a slasher attack booster. So Brook was a very, very desirable rare recruit on release. Very good unit. The next rare recruit is Nico Robin being a Dex fighter cerebral character with the captain ability of boosting Dex and Psy characters by 2.25 and giving them a 1.5 recovery boost. Bit of a weird captain ability. And then the special ability on a 16 turn cooldown, so a little high, but reducing despair by three turns and then also giving your Dex and Psy characters a two turn times attack boost for one turn very good special ability that was used in a lot of good teams a little bit of utility a little bit of damage boosting you love to see it and then the final rare recruit of this batch is going to be the brand new Usopp character who is a Psy shooter with no secondary class with the captain ability of boosting shooters attack by 2.25 with a 1.5 recovery boost not a good captain ability but then they special on a 14 turn cooldown would do 10 hits of 2000 fixed damage to random enemies and if there's a delayed debuff protection or all debuff 
debuff immunity, then when you launch the special, it's going to give your shooter characters a 1.75 times attack and a 1.75 times orb boost. It was an okay special, didn't really see a lot of play considering there are a lot of other Usopps that you would probably use on a shooter team comparatively to this. And by this point, shooters weren't really the hot topic at this at this time. You know, Stronghold Ace had been out for a very long time now. Uh, obviously, we had the, the Stronghold release, you know, a little bit ago now in, uh, in like mid to late 2016. And by this point, a lot of people were moving on into, di into different teams. So unfortunately, you know, this character didn't see a lot of play because shooters really were dead for a really, really long time. And even really still to this day, shooters have never really risen back to the top of being the best class in the game since the release of Stronghold Ace and also the Stronghold characters. But now we can finally talk about the brand new Sugo Fest exclusive character of the batch being Roronora Zoro, who has such a good artwork, by the way. I think a lot of people would agree that this is probably one of the best artworks they've ever created in the game's history. Now, he is a dex-driven slasher character with a captain ability that states that if you have five or more slashes in your crew, he would boost the attack of slashes by 2.5 times with a 1.5 health boost. And if you defeated an enemy in the previous turn, the attack boost to slashes would be a three times boost instead. But then he also gives all other characters a 1.2 boost. So it's kind of weird. Like if you basically need to build a team of slashes, you need five characters on your crew to be the slashes. But then even if you have like one unit that isn't boosted, they still get like a 1.2 boost. Don't even know why they decided to do that. It was very, very bizarre. But despite that, essentially a three times attack and a 1.5 times health boost to slashes was a very good captain ability. Um, despite the fact, you know, we had other character releases like a Kainu and, you know, time skip Luffy being up to upwards of like four times attack. This was still really good because three times attack was perfectly acceptable still. And a 1.5 times health boost was ridiculously good. Uh, I mean, the, the amount of tankiness that you have from that is crazy. And then he had a special ability on a 16 turn cooldown, a little bit high, but would deal 60 times his attack and typeless damage to all enemies. If Zora is your captain or your guest captain, he's going to give your slasher characters a two times attack boost for one turn. But if he's a crewmate, he gives a 1.75 times boost instead. So of course, for the purposes of the Legends of OPTC series, he is going to be used as a captain. So we are going to be seeing his two times attack boost, but just about the AOE damage that he provided as well. This is also one of the highest AOE damage dealers that we had had in the game's history at this point. I mean, like uh, V1 Akainu, who also had come out recently, also kind of rivaled that too. But still, if you wanted to build a slasher team, you definitely wanted to use him as a captain. This was the new best slasher captain alongside characters like V1 Law and even to an extent V1 Mihawk. But still, Zoro was an incredible legend and I really cannot wait to get into today's video to use this guy in some content. So as for the content that we are going to be playing today, we have three separate Colosseums. We have Colosseum Kiros, Colosseum Kanjuro, and then Colosseum Cat Viper, all of which I think are going to be relatively tricky. Kanjuro should be the easiest, Kiros I think will be kind of easy. Cat Viper I think is going to be the most difficult one to deal with. The very difficult Colosseum, but I feel like Zora is going to be up for the challenge. So let's go ahead and spin that wheel and let's see what kind of content we're going to be playing today with Legend Sugo Fest exclusive Zora. And it's going to be Conjurer. All right, fair enough. You know, the, the wheel has spoken. So we are going to be going ahead and taking on Colosseum Conjurer. Let's get it. All right, hold back. Hold back. Three, Three two, two, one, one go. Wait, wait. One. Two. Oh, two! Yes! Three, Three four, six, five, eight, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I got one right. red. I got two. You're, you're the man this one. Come on, let's go, boys. Okay, Todd, we both got a red on the second. Go on, do it. Zora, yes! Sanji, Sanji do. Do. Just for a second, I had to process what yeah. you like. <laughs> oh, I saw I'm like, yeah, wait, that's new. Yeah, let's oh, go. I've got Sanji too. Yeah. <laughs> really? I think my other one was the... We're back in game now with my man V1, Rora Nora Zoro, three sword style, straw hat pirates, swordsman. He trained under Mihawk, the adversary he swore he'd defeat someday for two years to improve his skills that allowed him to defeat the best swordsman on Fishman Island, showing just how much he had grown. I love this artwork. It looks so, so good. And I'm very, very excited to bring you guys a video with him today. So with Zoro, obviously we want to be building a slasher team and this is the team that we have built today to take on the Kanjuro Coliseum. We're making an appearance once again with Raid Doflamingo, no real surprise if we're building a slasher team. 
also Borsellino is going to be here to guarantee us some matching slots on that final stage. Uh, and then we've also got a couple new characters that haven't been shown off. We've got Ambush Cavendish, which was available around this time, give or take. Uh, Cavendish is just a nice unit to have if your captain is a dex unit, because uh, Cavendish actually has like a really obscure crewmate effect that kind of stops him being used in content. Yeah, this crewmate effect reduces the crew's base attack by half if the captain is a strength or a quick character. Very obscure effect, but he is a very nice unit because he will give our slasher characters an orb boost, a really good orb boost at that. So we have two different orb boosters, with double Zora, we're going to have two different attack boosters. Borsalino for matching slots. And then the Shiryu is very important as well. Because with this Colosseum, there's going to be three different variations on stage three. And uh, one of those variations will inflict poison to us. So that's why we have Shiryu, because he is able to heal the poison for us. Plus, he will have type advantage on the final boss stage versus Kanduro. So pretty important to have him on the team. Uh, we are also using the Coffin Boat Ship, which gives our slasher characters a lot of attack and a lot of HP. So with double Zora and the ship all giving us 1.5 times health. I'm expecting to have like minimum 50k health. It's probably going to be a lot more than that. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the content. And massive shout out to my girl Carissa once again for bringing up her own Zora. So we're going to go ahead and use that for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the content here with our double V1 Zoras, Borsalino, Doflamingo, Shiryu, and Cavendish. So let's get it. It's time. Hopefully we get a good variation on stage three though. And here we go. We have 69 giggity thousand HP. That's pretty awesome. That's really, really good. That's, that's so much HP. And I don't think we have to deal with any despair throughout this uh, quest either. So that health is here to stay. But one thing that is very important, first of all, is getting those, uh, those cooldowns maxed, um, especially getting Shiryu maxed. And the reason for it is, is because uh, we, we will need Shiryu on stage 3 if we do encounter the variation that inflicts poison to us. So that's actually pretty important, okay? So we're going to go ahead and kill these guys on the one turn cooldown, and we can get plenty of stall off here on these turtles, of course. And, you know, it would be kind of nice if we can generate some more matching slots for our team, though I don't know if one of the... Do one of the I think one of the variations might do orb changing. I think they might. Because I think the three variations is Magellan, which is the one that does the poison. There's also a Jabra, which is probably the easiest one to deal with. And then there's also the one with Momonga, I believe. And I think Momonga does do some orb changing. So depending on what we come up against, you know, it would be nice to have Shiryu for that. Because not only does Shiryu remove poison, but he also allows us to get damage reduction for three turns. And he also will instantly defeat characters that have like less than 100 times his attack. So that's pretty cool because I think there are some mob characters that can appear on stage three. So it is nice to be a little bit prepared for that. And with this much health as well, this is really nice. Like, we can just tank hits for days. And remember the way that Zora works, and that Zora will actually get um, a higher attack boost if you killed something in the previous turn. Um, it's not like V1 Kuzan, for example, where you continuously needed to kill something every turn to continuously stack. Zora is just like in two different phases. He's either, you, did you kill something or did you not kill something? So it's really easy because it means as soon as you enter a final boss room, you're always going to have the buffed version because you had to kill something to move into the next room, right? So that's at least a nice little uh, positive that this character has. Uh, in this situation here, we're looking pretty good. We will need to do at least one more turn of store. We do have a couple matching slots on our Zoras, which it definitely would be nice to keep. Because if we do encounter the Jabra variation, Jabra is actually a quick character, so having type advantage on that is good. Uh, I think here, though, we will probably just pass, maybe try and get an orb on Cavendish, because if we encounter Magellan, he is a strength unit. So let's see what our stage 3 variation is, and it is Magellan. No matching slot, though, on Cavendish, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. So Magellan here, as I said, he does poison us. Does he do anything else, actually? Poison. Oh, and one turn of paralysis. Okay, that's kind of nasty. Well, at least we do have the Shiryu special, which is going to... I think it actually will kill all the mobs. It does kill all the mobs, and it gives us a bit of damage reduction, too. Okay, that's actually really good. So, we're just going to go ahead and pass the turn here. That was perfectly planned out. It's exactly what I wanted to do. All right, so, paralysis, gone. Uh, he doesn't do anything on turn two, either. So, now we can just do whatever we want and kill off this guy. And we did kill something in the previous turn due to the Shiryu special, so we do have the three times captain ability. Just missed out on killing him there. Uh oh, what does he do? Uh oh, does he do it again? Oh no! Oh no! Okay, that's really bad. Uh, and we got three turns of paralysis too. Oh no, dude, this is so bad. Um, okay. Okay, okay. 
Okay, this is bad. I kind of want to stall until that paralysis is gone, but I don't... How much poison damage is this? I can't really tell how much that was. Um... Damn, okay, let's pass here. Oh, that did kill. Oh man, oh man, this could be bad. This could be really, really bad. Okay, here we have Moria. So Moria, he, he's kind of annoying. He does revive actually, so that's that really, really does suck. But what we can do is we will be doing some type of burst against him, but we're gonna stall to get rid of that paralysis because we don't wanna deal with that. And now in this turn, we can use the Doflamingo special and the Zora special. Actually, we've got really good slots here. Okay, bit of damage there. Let's use the Dofi special. So Dofi is going to go ahead and allow us to switch our slots around. So we want to give Kizaru a matching slot, obviously. Um, and then we don't really care about the rest. That's fine. And then we can use a Zora special. So Zora is going to give us a bit of an attack boost here. Remember, if he's the captain and you use his special, you get a two times attack boost comparatively to 1.75. Really cool special animation there. So at this point, we have two times orb boost, two times attack boost. And this will probably kill Moria. It's going to do a lot of damage. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, do as much damage as we possibly can to Moria. Let's get it. Oh, just missed out on the kill. That was so close. Okay. Um, I guess we want to try and get another matching slot on, on him. So we'll just go ahead and pass the turn real quick. And get the kill, of course. So remember, now that we have killed him in this turn, if a character revives, you actually do still keep the three times boost because you did kill something in that previous turn. So Moria... Wow, he did a lot of damage there. I think we actually die. I think we're dead because we actually have to do a couple of turns of stall on the Kanjuro stage in order to pierce his barrier. So I think no matter what, I think we're dead here. I'm pretty sure we're dead. That sucks big time. <sighs> well, not much we can really do here. We have to just uh, do what we can. Okay, we did make it to the final stage, but I believe the poison is going to be our downfall because we have to, like, tank two hits. So the thing about Kanjuro is that Kanjuro actually will apply a slot barrier, and the slot barrier that he applies changes every single turn. Now, in this instance here, what we want to do is, is we want to wait until the dex barrier appears, which is two turns away because he does a cycle. And the thing here is, is that we can't stall two turns because we don't have enough health to do so. We don't even have two side slots to pierce his barrier. We have two quick slots here. So I guess here we just, we have to try and eat the recovery slot and heal, heal back. We could technically use Kizaru in the next turn if we survive. And then that will give us a bit of heal. I think we're dead. No! Oh, that was so close. Oh, well, we're going to have to run it back, chat. We're going to have to run it back. That's it. All right, let's try again. All right, so now we're back on stage three. We have some pretty good matching slots here. Now, we definitely want to save the, uh, the these matching slots, if at all possible. We're definitely the one on Cavendish, because if we do somehow encounter Magellan again, we want to make sure we can kill him before he can apply the poison again. That was really bad, and that is literally the reason why we lost. So we don't want to deal with that again. So let's go ahead and kill this guy off. Good, we get to keep as many matching slots as possible. Who do we get this time, though? This time we actually get the Jabra, so we don't have to worry about the poison being inflicted to us here. So Jabra has a couple of turns of increased defense, which is not really that big of a deal. So we're just going to go ahead and pass the turn until the defense is gone. He doesn't really do much else, if I, at least I, that's what I think. So we're going to take a couple hits, but this is nowhere near as bad as the poison, of course. We could technically use the, the Shiryu special here if we wanted to, just to, you know, mitigate some of the damage that we were taking. But we can also use it on the Moria stage to tank hits against him as well. So that is that, and now the defense is gone, and now we can try and do as much damage as we can. So let's go ahead and pierce that barrier, and do some damage. Very high base defense. But he doesn't have a lot of HP at all, like, what, 200,000 HP? That's nothing. Just very high base defense. Alright, so now we've got my man Moria. So once again, we're in that situation where we probably want to do a burst turn, but unfortunately for us, we actually don't have a matching slot on Borsalino. So I think I'm actually going to just do normal attacks this turn, and until we get a side slot, we really want a side slot on Borsalino just to make sure we can get that kill. So let's just do a bit of damage. Unfortunately, we're going to do a burst when we don't have the three times attack boost from 
the Zora captains because at this point we didn't kill something in the previous turn. We do get a Psy slot though, which is very good for us. Bit of damage there for Moria. So let's go ahead and use the, the Doflamingo special. Make sure we get that matching slot. So we've got two matching slots there and we can get two matching slots there. That's actually perfect. We use the Zora special, get the attack boost. So even though we're at the 2.5 attack captain instead of the three times attack captain, this is probably still going to hit really hard on this Moria. So let's get it. And there it is. We actually got the KO on Moria on that burst turn, which is great. And now he revives, does a bit of damage. We could have used Shiryu there to actually tank some of that damage. We probably should have. Pretty hefty amount of damage. But we can also use it on the stage with Kanjuro too to tank hits there. Either way, we did kill something in the previous turn. So we have the buffed attack boost. Uh, let's just do normal attacks once again. We might actually kill in this first turn here. Nice. Matching slot on Borsalino definitely helped there. But now we've finally made it to the last stage. I am expecting to win this time around, okay? So Kanjiro, as we've already established, puts up a slot barrier. And he does that every single turn with a cycling one. So starts off with Psy. I don't actually remember what the second one was. But I know the one after it is going to be Dex. So that's the one that we want because we have a lot of Dex characters, obviously. Uh, we can't piece through the barrier, so we're just going to stall. And of course, it does mean on the burst turn, we're not going to have the three times attack, but with all of our burst active, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so now he has a a quick barrier. Okay, so he goes side quick and dex should be the next one. So we'll pass the turn. We've got lots of health to play with here. And now it should be dex, I think. And there it is. So, this is the burst turn. Let's go ahead and use Borsalino. We've used him a couple of times recently, actually. Very, very nice for shooter and slasher teams. Full board of matching slots. Bit of health recovery as well. You love to see it. There we go. Now, this is where we get to use the Cavendish special, which allows us to get a 2.25 uh, times all boost if our HP isn't above a certain amount. I actually think in this situation, we're probably not going to have the 2.25 all boost, but two times all boost is still good enough. And then we use the Zora special, which gives us the two times attack boost as well. So once again, all these boosts active, we have a matching slot on Shiryu, of course. So now we're going to go ahead and piece the barrier with the dex slots first, and then finish off with Shiryu to hopefully get the kill. All right, here we go. Here's the burst turn that we've been all been, wait all been waiting for. Boom. Easy. Look at that. Bro, first try, right? <laughs> Anyways, we finally got through Kanjiro with a little bit of a mishap on that first run. But hey, look, it happens. It happens. But anyways, really happy we were able to use... Zora to a little bit of success to clear the the Colosseum Chandra was a lot of fun using this old school legend for sure very very good and with all of that that is going to conclude today's One Piece Treasure Cruise video and also next week we are going to be going ahead and covering Hody Jones so Hody Jones made his appearance after Zora on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global so definitely look forward to next week's episode if you guys did enjoy this video though make sure you go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys I'll see you guys within the next video